With over a billion followers worldwide, Islam has grown over the centuries from a tribal desert sect to a global religion. In this seminar, we will examine some of the most essential aspects of the Islamic faith. In part one, we will look at the life of the Prophet Muhammad. In part two, we will learn more about the Holy Book of Islam, the Quran. Finally, in part three, we will examine in a bit more depth what Islam teaches about the nature of God. So let's start with the Prophet Muhammad. By the way, when Muslims speak or write his name, they follow it with the phrase, Peace be upon him, as a sign of respect and devotion. This being a scholarly presentation, we will not be following this custom here, but it's good to be aware of it as you will see it often in more devotional types of writing. The Prophet Muhammad was born in the year 570 Common Era in the Arabian city of Mecca. He regularly spent time in the mountains in secluded prayer, and at age 40, he reported to have received his first revelation from God. Three years later, Muhammad began to preach publicly, claiming that God is one, and that the only acceptable path to God was through surrender. The Arabic word for surrender was Islam, and so this became the name of this new faith, with Muhammad as God's unparalleled prophet and messenger. Like most prophets, Muhammad and his initial group of followers faced persecution, which caused them to migrate to Medina in the year 622. This event, known as the Hijrah, marks the beginning of the Islamic calendar, which is currently in the year 1434. For those of you wondering why the Islamic calendar is at 1434, when the Hijrah occurred less than 1400 years ago, the reason is simple. An Islamic year has 10 to 11 fewer days than a Gregorian year, making Islamic years go by faster. For the sake of clarity, we will stick to the Gregorian calendar throughout this seminar. Now back to Muhammad. While in Medina, he was able to unite many of the Arabian tribes under the banner of Islam and the constitution of Medina. The Meccan tribes finally succumbed to Muhammad and his army in the year 630. Muhammad is said to have destroyed all the idols in the city, and then sent his followers out to do the same throughout eastern Arabia. Muhammad died in Medina in the year 632, but not before uniting the entire peninsula under Islam, both religiously and politically. Ever since that fateful day in the cave, Muhammad is said to have received revelations from God. These sayings were compiled into a book called the Quran, which Muslims regard as the literal word of God. We will learn more about the Quran in part two of this seminar. Here are some suggested questions for discussion. Number one, do you notice any similarities between Muhammad and other prophets? Any differences? Number two, can you think of any other spiritual leaders who are also political leaders? Number three, have you ever visited Mecca, Medina, or any other prominent place for Muhammad's life? 